Welcome dear students, this is me Dr. Ahmed Farid, Associate Professor of Anatomy and Embryology and in this video we will discuss the uh, deep group of the muscles of the front of the forearm. In our previous video we discussed the superficial group of the muscles of the front of the forearm and let's uh, uh, revise them again and hide them at the same time to see the deep group of the muscles of the front of the forearm. This muscle was pronator teres. After it, we have flexor carpi radialis. Then we have palmaris longus. And the most medial muscle in the front of the forearm, we said it's called flexor carpi annaris. And we said also in our previous video that these four muscles are present in the same anatomical plane, hiding deep to them the flexor digitorum superficialis. We will hide all these muscles to look to the deep group of the front of the forearm. And also we will hide this brachioradialis, one of the extensors of the forearm. Now we can look to the muscles of the deep group of the front of the forearm. And as you see, they are three muscles. Have the general feature of originating from the bones of the front of the forearm, either radius or ulna in addition to the interosseous membrane between radius and the ulna. Uh, let's enumerate them. We have one laterally called flexor pollicis longus and the other one is present medially and it's called flexor digitorum profundus. As you see, it's going to the medial forefingers. And finally, we have a small transverse muscle at the lower part of the forearm and it's much deeper than these two muscles it's called pronator quadratus pronator quadratus okay in the following few minutes we will talk about each muscle as regard uh, their attachments and their actions as regard the nerve supply the deep muscles of the front of the forearm are supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve which is a branch from the median nerve except the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus which is taking nerve supply from ulnar nerve let's start by our first muscle which is called flexor pollicis longus from its name it will perform flexion for the thumb so now we want to talk about its attachments as you see flexor pollicis longus is originating from the front of the radius anterior surface of the radius and interosseous membrane as you see so it takes common origin from the front of the radius with the interosseous membrane and is going to be inserted into the distal phalanx of the thumb so this is our muscle flexor pollicis longus because it reaches the terminal or distal phalanx of the thumb so its action will be so simply it's as any muscle crossing in front of the wrist joint so it will help in the flexion of the hand at the wrist joint and as it reaches the distal phalanx of the thumb it will perform flexion of all joints of the thumb Let's remember with each other the flexion of the wrist. And here we find all muscles performing flexion of the wrist. And I will specify the selection here for our muscle, which is flexor pollicis longus. Don't forget that other muscles present in the forearm can perform flexion of the wrist as long as they are crossing in front of the wrist joint. For example, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor carpi annaris, and the flexor digitorum superficialis, and also profundus. All of them crosses or cross in front of the wrist joint, so they can perform a flexion of the hand at the wrist joint. The other movement, which is specific for flexor pollicis longus, is the flexion of all joints of the thumb, as you see. All joints of the thumb. This is our flexor pollicis longus. It reaches the distal phalanx of the thumb so it can flex the metacarbophalangeal and the interphalangeal joint of the thumb or uh, so easy to say it will flex all joints of the thumb okay 
As regards the second muscle in the deep group of the muscles of the front of the forearm, it's flexor digitorum profundus. It's present just deep to the other muscle which is called the flexor digitorum superficialis. In order to talk about the origin of the flexor digitorum profundus, you will find it attached to the following. The front of the ulna, medial aspect of the ulna, so it takes origin from anterior and medial surfaces of the ulna, and it takes origin also from the ulnar aponeurosis attached to the posterior border of the ulna, and so logic to take origin from the interosseous membrane which is present between ulna and radius. And as regard its insertion, we will make a zoom for the insertion, like this. It's going to be inserted into the distal phalanges of the medial four fingers. Distal phalanges of the medial four fingers. So, its action will be performing flexion of the hand at the wrist joint because the same rule that we already knew it very well that any muscle crosses in front of the wrist joint it will make flexion of this wrist joint and as it reaches the distal phalanges of the medial four fingers so it can make flexion of all joints of the medial four fingers and especially the distal interphalangeal joints let's Remember again, again, and again with each other the flexion of the wrist joint, and this is the flexor digitorum profundus, as you see. It passes deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis, and passes through the splitting of the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis to reach the distal phalanges. So this is the first action, which is flexion of the hand at the wrist joint. The other action is flexion of all joints of the medial four fingers. As you see. Let's rotate the muscle like this to look to the front of the fingers. So, it makes a flexion of all joints of the medial four fingers as it reaches the terminal phalanges of the medial four fingers so it flexes the metacarbophalangeal proximal interphalangeal and the distal interphalangeal joints of the medial four fingers okay and finally we will talk about this small quadrangular muscle which is called the pronator quadratus as you see it connects both ulna and radius and the interosseous membrane in between so if you want to talk about its, uh, its attachments, so simply it originates from the lower part of the front of the ulna and to be inserted into the lower part of the front of the radius. And this is small quadrangular muscle, if I make an action to approximate its, its insertion to its origin, it will perform so easily the radius like this, so it will perform pronation from its name because it's called pronator quadratus so now we can see both muscles performing pronation one in the superficial group which is called pronator teres and one in the deep group which is called pronator quadratus and i will select it here like this so this is pronator quadratus muscle performing pronation of the forearm And now we finished our video talking about the deep muscles of the front of the forearm until we meet again in other uh, videos uh, I can uh, tell you now goodbye.